Welcome to Off Grid Victory. So it's kind of a, <laughs> it's been raining a lot here in the Ozarks. Uh, kind of a wet, cold day, but uh, just wanted to do a quick uh, pruning video. Now you want to prune fruit trees um, just so that you'll uh, have those uh, young trees like so uh, grow very strong roots. I haven't had time to cage this guy for the deer. Uh, to protect it but I did mulch it and, and get it to a good start and uh, I did prune it a little bit as you can see uh, here and here but uh, what I wanted to show you is um, how I normally prune now I learned this from Paul Gauchi and he recommends good uh, tools like uh, a Falco's uh, a pruner and uh, I think it's the Falco number eight, but um, anyway, I can't find mine today, but I do have this guy. Uh, this is just a off brand, it's a still version of it. Anyway, there you go, if you wanna see it. Uh, it's pretty good too. I mean, it's not as good as uh, the Falco's obviously, but you know, it'll do in a pinch. Uh, it's better than the Chinese stuff. Anyway, this could be Chinese stuff, who knows. But, um, at any rate, what I normally do is I prune anything that is going inward into the trees, like so, okay? And right now, like I said, I have buds on this. You don't even need, you know, pruners for this. You can just get it with your fingers. Um, and uh, anything that's crossing. So, for instance, this tree limb right here was crossing into that, so it was cut. And then, overall, it was cut down, just like I said, to promote the, the root growth down there because um, that's what I really want. And anything going straight up, I also uh, cut out. So anything that's coming into the tree, anything that's going straight up, I cut with, uh, with these pruning uh, shears. At any rate though, um, I wanted to show you something else because this is the Ozarks and you know, I call it the uh, land of extreme. So um, excuse the camera right here, we're just gonna be taking a quick little walk. Um, so I have a lot of persimmons on this property. Uh, Native American persimmons and, I, and we really enjoy them. We do all sorts of stuff with it and um, The problem was I was doing my shipping container build here. I'll show you in the distance And there were two trees here and you can see this is extreme pruning now Some people will say hey, you just cut that down and that thing's not going to survive Well, the option was cut it all the way to the base or let it grow and it was already over the height of the container so I, I really didn't want it to go any further but they were fruiting uh, persimmon tree so kind of uh, difficult to get rid of them and uh, I figured hey here's the next uh, extreme but uh, useful alternative to keep this guy alive and keep on producing so what I did was I cut this guy on a diagonal um, with my chainsaw of course and uh, what I did after the fact was um, I put this product on it. It's a, it's a pruning sealer. And now you don't absolutely need to do this, but I had it on hand for another project that I did. So I was just able to go ahead and spray it. Um, you're gonna have to let that dry and cure and spray it a couple more times. But what it'll do is prevent any, any rot. And the reason why I cut it on an angle, if you can see here, is because I want the water to cascade off of it. I don't want it to uh, create rot. And so hopefully this sucker will start branching out and create kind of a, a bush tree, if you can imagine that. And uh, it'll be low enough to the ground where I can easily harvest it and um, it'll survive and kind of bush out, if you will, versus growing very tall and potentially hitting my uh, shipping container as it gets older. So um, I'll try to cut in some footage of, uh, of what it may look like because I've done this to other trees on my property with success. So um, just to prove that it could work. Obviously, I won't know until this year is, uh, is done, but uh, that's it. So uh, let me see if I can cut in uh, another feed for that uh, other picture. All right, so we're back. So I wanted to continue on this uh, pruning video in the Ozarks to show you what extreme pruning can do. Now, one of the things I forgot to say in this video, in the last video, is that uh, with in association with uh, pruning shears like so, uh, the other thing you may need, especially for the larger branches, is something like this. Uh, this is just a uh, delimbing like uh, pole saw. This happens to be a foldable kind. But at any rate, you need one of these as well. Um, but 
obviously for the big jobs, chainsaw. So let's go to this tree. Let's take a look at that. So here are two uh, persimmon trees. Uh, this whole area is going to be cleared at some point and I was just messing around with it and what I did as you can see here right up at the top here is I just cut it straight across before this didn't even have any limbs at all this was the trunk base of this tree and take a look at this now I let this go way too long it's been probably about two years worth of growth at this point but um yeah you can see this tree um this tree at, at one point would have probably been about oh a good 15 feet tall now it's only uh, uh it's only about let's say uh 10 foot tall at the top at the top branch level however the trunk right there uh, is less than four feet uh, high so it can grow and the uh, extreme pruning will work on on these things so um especially if you have a tree that's iffy like like ours the one that was by the container uh, experiment with it see if it'll survive and if it doesn't you know you can always cut it down all the way to the base and uh and get rid of it but uh, it's it's um it's a bad thing to uh, get rid of fruiting trees that you can eat so to the extent that you can save it try it um you have nothing to lose at any rate all righty shalom